Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Childcare workers go on strike in Indian capital. Israeli forces kill two Palestinians in occupied East Jerusalem. Ukrainian forces arrest communist youth leaders. And Iran and IAEA reach agreement on cooperation. In our first story, childcare workers in the Indian capital of Delhi have been on strike for over a month. There are over 10,000 government-run daycare centers or Anganwadis under the Integrated Child Development Scheme. 22,000 workers provide crucial services to over 100,000 women and children in Delhi. However, they are not recognized as government employees and as such do not have any access to facilities like a pension, travel allowances and medical and welfare benefits. On January 31st, workers from across the capital region gathered to raise 17 demands. At the time, Anganwari workers were being paid around 9,968 rupees or which is about $129 a month. Their helpers were being paid just over $63. These workers are exclusively women and form one of the primary links between the government and the community. They have been involved in vaccination campaigns, ration distribution, census taking and as frontline workers during the COVID pandemic. On February 24th, the go government of Delhi increased the pay of workers by 31% and that of helpers by 40%. However, this fell way short of the 25,000 and 20,000 rupees demanded by workers and helpers respectively. Workers also launched overnight protests outside the Women and Child Development Department after the government threatened disciplinary action. Termination notices were sent to at least 26 workers over the weekend for their continued participation in the strike. The letters said that they had deliberately attempted to disrupt the ICDS scheme. It added that since they were honorary workers, they could be terminated without intimation. In our next story, Israeli forces killed two Palestinian teenagers in occupied East Jerusalem on March 6th. 16-year-old Yaman Jafal was shot near a military post in Abu Dis late on Sunday. Witnesses stated that Israeli forces barred paramedics from treating him and even fired tear gas at the approaching ambulance. The occupation forces proceeded to seize Jafal's body in an often used tactic in violation of international law. Israel later claimed that he was allegedly throwing Molotov cocktails at the military post. Palestinians took to the streets in huge numbers to protest the killing but were attacked with tear gas and rubber bullets leaving many injured. Earlier on Sunday, 19-year-old Karim Jamal Kawasmi was killed by Israeli forces in the Bab Hutta neighborhood. Israel claimed that he tried to stab security forces stationed at the gate leading to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, calling it a terrorist act. Israel has routinely used disproportionate force against Palestinians in what amounts to extrajudicial killings. Rise groups have also accused it of deploying a shoot-to-kill policy. It also routinely carries out violent arrest raids in the occupied West Bank, where any acts of resistance are met with lethal force. At least three Palestinians were killed in Janine and Bethlehem last week. The United Nations OCHA has said that at least eight Palestinians were killed and over 100 wounded in the West Bank since the start of 2022 until February 21st. We now move on to Ukraine, where security forces arrested two leaders of the Leninist Communist Youth Union, or the LKSMU, on March 6th. An official statement read that Mikhail and Alexander Kononovich had been arrested from Kiev and jailed. They have been accused of being pro-Russian and pro-Belarusian propagandists with a goal to destabilize the situation in Ukraine. The World Federation of Democratic Youth has condemned the arrest and has urged progressive groups to mobilize to demand their freedom. It has also warned of a serious threat to the lives of the Kononovich brothers in custody. Pro-Russian and anti-European Union political groups in Ukraine have faced persecution since the 2014 US-backed Euromaidan coup. In 2015, the country passed decommunization laws, which led to the banning of the Communist Party of Ukraine from 2019 election. 
LKSMU and its leadership have also been repeatedly targeted both by the government and ultra-nationalist neo-Nazi groups. The Kononovich brothers had participated in a protest outside the U.S. Embassy in Kiev on February 16th. They were demanding that the U.S. get out of Ukraine and stop its pursuit of imperialist expansion. In a previous interview with People's Dispatch, the Kononovich brothers highlighted the role of the U.S. in propping up neo-Nazi groups and its influence on the state in Ukraine. They also spoke of the Zelensky government's crackdown on the Communist Party given its struggle for issues like workers' and peasants' rights and its opposition to NATO. And finally, Iran and the International Atomic Energy Agency held crucial talks over the weekend. The meeting took place on March 5th, parallel to the ongoing negotiations to restore the 2015 nuclear deal in Vienna. Iran has demanded that the IAEA shut down its probe into the presence of undeclared radioactive materials at several sites. It has previously called the issues related to the probe as political demands made by the West. The IAEA head, Rafael Grossi, met with Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian and Nuclear Chief Mohammad Eslami on Saturday. Both sides agreed to strengthen mutual cooperation and dialogue to resolve issues. Iran has agreed to provide explanations on issues related to three locations. Eslami added that documentation on remaining issues will be provided around late May. According to Iran's official news agency, officials also brought up Israel's attempts to generate a crisis. Grossi spoke to Prime Minister Naftali Bennett before Saturday's meeting. Meanwhile, he also spoke to reporters about the importance of an understanding between Iran and the IAEA for nuclear deal talks. Officials involved have indicated that the result of the negotiations is imminent. Iranian diplomats held talks with the EU chief, Russia and China over the weekend. Iran's demands include the removal of sanctions, including the designation of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps as a foreign terrorist organization. It has also asked for a verification mechanism and guarantees that the U.S. will not abandon the deal again. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.